Guys, if I'm being honest, Spider-Man 2 is not as good as the first game, or even Miles Morales. It's so much better, baby. Let's go. It was worth the wait. It's the best game I ever played. Spider-Man 2, let's go. Seriously, if you have a PS5, you should get this game. And if you haven't played the first one, get Spider-Man Remastered. It is $70, which is a little pricey, but it's worth it. This game pushes the limits of the PS5, and it shows. And if you still have a PS4, I feel bad for you. If you want a PS5, free giveaway, baby, yeah! Like, comment, and subscribe, and maybe you'll get a free PS5. I'm joking, of course. I mean, you can still do that stuff. You just won't get a free PS5. Let's get to the review part now. Spider-Man is my favorite game. The first one, that is. Or, it was. I loved the gameplay, the story was great, the villains were great, I loved the characters. It was just such a good game. And I really wanted a good sequel. I was excited for Miles Morales, but I knew it wouldn't be as big. It was still a pretty decent game, though. But I was so excited when Spider-Man 2 came out. I'll get into why it's such a good game in a minute. But holy crap, this was a good sequel. I'll just be splitting this review up into little categories. Starting with... The gameplay in this game is absolutely amazing. It improves on everything that the first two did. I already thought the combat was great in those games. But this game finds a way to make it more fresh, adding new abilities like Peter's new spider robot arms. Miles even gets new Venom electric abilities, which are really helpful. And if you watch this far, just know that if I spoil you, I'm really sorry. But I'm not going to make a warning every time. Every time I'm about to spoil. So if you don't want spoilers, click off, play the game, and come back. There's new moves that you can get from the skill tree that weren't in the first two games. I think there's new finisher animations, which are always really cool. The new gadgets are really helpful, and one of them is a really big part of the story. All of these things just make this game so much better than the first two games, which already had really good combat. This game, it doesn't feel as repetitive, because you can use different abilities different gadgets, and new moves. And, yeah, let's talk about the swinging real quick. Swinging and traversal are so good in this game. I don't use the fast travel method that much because swinging is just so much more fun. You can launch yourself to get momentum. The swinging speed is so much faster than in Miles Morales and Spider-Man. And the web wings, oh my gosh, the web wings are the best thing ever. Especially when you get caught up in those wind tunnels that just take you from one place to the other really quickly it's just so good i just love the swinging in this game and they even added new swinging tricks which is pretty nice and yes this game does have stealth missions which is unfortunate because they are the worst part of the first game but i didn't really hate them that much in this game because well all of them were with mj i think besides the school one and she could actually fight back with a taser which you only got to do once in the first game and even later on, yeah, this is a small spoiler, you can use webs to web up your enemies, which is so cool. It only gives us more options than just sneak around table. We can fight back, especially in the last stealth mission, because there's actually a little mini boss, which is really cool. I wasn't expecting it one bit. So while, yes, I do think the stealth missions are still the weakest part of this game, they're not as bad as they were in the first. They're actually a lot better. That's it for the gameplay, but I still want to talk about something else that has to do a little bit with gameplay. And that will be... One of my favorite aspects of the first game were the boss fights. Either because I thought they were really fun, or they just contributed to the story a lot. And some of them were decently hard. But this game takes the boss fights to a whole new level. The bosses finally have health bars, which is something I really wanted in the first game. And they're so nice. And since I was playing on spectacular mode, these bosses were not easy. They were probably easier for other people who played on other difficulties. But the bosses did so much health to me. And each of them had their own different quirks on how to defeat them. Which is kind of similar to the first game. But if you ask me, in the first game, the bosses were kind of repetitive. Like, one boss would be web him up, throw stuff at him, web zip. And that happened a lot. For example, take Shocker and Martin Lee in the first one. You web him up, or throw stuff at him, and then web zip to him. 
While there is similar boss fights to that in this game, there are also other ways to defeat them. Like, for instance, using your abilities, using your web gadgets. Some of them are even immune to your webs. And I think that's really cool. And they also have a lot more phases in this game. Like, the final boss has, like, three or four stages, I think. The lizard has three or four. Craven has a few. Speaking of Craven, I love how the villains have unique ways of stopping you that kind of make you multitask. Because in Craven, he has the bell. It kind of messes with the symbiote suit, so you have to focus on stopping that while also dodging his attacks. Same goes with Lizard. You can't web zip to him, so you have to find another way to get him down. These bosses really get you thinking, and also multitasking. I think it's a big improvement from the first game. And Miles Morales. Because their bosses weren't awful, just not amazing. This story is the perfect continuation of the last two games. And it brings it all together. It will keep the segment shorter to avoid spoilers for you guys. But they did a great job with this story. They make having two Spider-Man work and both of them have their own problems that they're facing. Miles with Martin Lee and him wanting to hunt him down. Peter with Harry and getting a new job and paying the mortgage and stuff. It all just finds a way of having this all in one game and it's really nice. And holy crap, the villains are great. The Hunters and Craven are so good. And Craven is such a menace. And his motivation is really interesting. He just wants to find an equal who can kill him. In my opinion, the story gets even more interesting when Peter gets the symbiote suit. He becomes a bully, you could say. And he's mean to everyone around him. He doesn't care about Harry and his treatment. And that storyline all leads up to an emotional boss battle. Here's a short spoiler segment. Martin Lee's redemption was great. I definitely didn't see it coming. And the anti-venom suit was so cool. I was not expecting that. I'm so glad that we had a way to use the symbiote and be good. And Peter having the symbiote leading to the creation of venom was just so cool and I didn't see it coming. And But I did see Harry being venom coming. I love the venom playable segment. I know that's something everybody wanted and we got it. It was so cool. Venom was just the best villain in this game. This is just a segment of random stuff I decided to include in this review. There's stuff that I like about the game. Maybe a little bit of what I dislike. First of all, I really like the collectibles in this game. Or the little side mission things. I like Marco's memories. There's a nice little storyline to it. The pictures are nice because it lets you see this awesome map that the creators made. Little hidden details. The EMF plant things are alright, I guess. Nothing special. I like the hunter's bases. The drones are fun to chase, and I really like the Mysteriums. Haven't completed it at all yet, but I'm working on it. But this map is absolutely crazy, like two times bigger than the first. But it's a lot bigger. Love web winging across the river. Coney Island's cool. Swinging through the suburbs is fun. I, this map is just awesome. I like the suits in this game a lot. Are there some ones that stick out? Absolutely. And yeah, they're for the wrong reason. They added so many suits that we wanted. Like the Superior Spider-Man suit, the Tobey Maguire black suit, the Amazing Spider-Man 2 suit, the Across the Spider-Verse suit. It's just awesome. I'm so happy that they have the black suit so I can just go walk down the street in the game and point fingers. And it's just a really cool looking suit in general. I kind of like the new suits they added, but some of them are pretty ugly. But I also think it's really cool that you can change the color of them to make every suit different. Not just red and blue or black and red. You can make it yellow and white. That's crazy. Love the customization options. There's only two problems I have with the game. There are bugs and glitches, which I guess are expected around release date, but still, they can be annoying sometimes. I mean, I straight up glitched through a bridge. I bet there's going to be a patch update soon. There was one mission that I wasn't a huge fan of, and it's not for the reason you think it is. I just didn't really love the Black Cat mission. I mean, they had to put her in the game somehow. But it kind of felt repetitive, just kind of chasing her around, going to rooftops, analyzing crime scenes. I just wasn't a fan of that one. It was still fun going through the portals, I guess. Overall, I think this game is an absolute masterpiece. From the gameplay to the awesome story, heck, even to the stealth missions, this game is amazing. I absolutely recommend buying it if you haven't yet. And, yeah. 
It's game of the year. I bet. I mean, I haven't played too many games this year, but I think this will be game of the year. Looks like Tears of the Kingdom has some competition. Although, I don't even know if it comes close. This game's a 10 out of 10. It's a masterpiece. What else do you want me to say? If you haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It'd be greatly appreciated. Let me know your thoughts if you've beaten Spider-Man 2 or have played a little bit of it. And that's a cut.